Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. Now how everybody we do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up. Blessed and beautiful good morning to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the third day of October. I almost said the 10th day of March. It's the third day of October in 2022. And let me tell you, I will share the photo with you after morning prayer. And orange sun burning brightly in a blue gray sky with dead calm sea like glass coconut trees no movement of air to cause it to sway it's a beautiful day in my neighborhood i hope you are having a wonderful day where you are as well we're going to kick things off this beautiful monday morning it is a beautiful monday morning we're going to kick things off this morning with one entitled awake awake to love and work let's have a listen Oh, God. 
that one there entitled Awake, Awake to Love and Work. We're going to continue then with getting our words here up on screen for today, September the 3rd in 2022. And here we go. Excellent. There we have it. Wonderful. Now, let me see if I could adjust something here. Aha, there we are. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling place. If you are following along in your Church of the Province of the West Indies Books of Common Prayer, we are on page 35 using versicle 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Together with our prayer, or invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle, the Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100 and can be found on page 37. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause briefly to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things perhaps that would have been unkind, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we have the reading of our Psalms, and our Psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 106, Part 1. Let's have a listen. Psalm 106 Hallelujah! Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord? or show forth all his praise. Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people and visit me with your saving help that I may see the prosperity of your elect and be glad with the gladness of your people that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned as our forebears did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt, they did not consider your marvelous works. 
nor remember the abundance of your love. They defied the Most High at the Red Sea, but he saved them for his name's sake, to make his power known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up, and he led them through the deep as through a desert. He saved them from the hands of those who hated them, and redeemed them from the hands of the enemy. The waters covered their oppressors. Not one of them was left. Then they believed his words and sang him songs of praise. But they soon forgot his deeds and did not wait for his counsel. A craving seized them in the wilderness and they put God to the test in the desert. He gave them what they asked, but sent leanness into their souls. They envied Moses in the camp, and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed the data, and covered the company of Abiram. Fire blazed up against their company and flames devoured the wicked. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second canticle is the canticle, the first song of Isaiah, canticle number nine. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from the book of Hosea, Hosea chapter 14, verses 1 through to 9. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God written in the book of Hosea, chapter 14, verses 1 to 9. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, Take away all guilt. Accept that which is good. And we will offer the fruits of our lips. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. We will say no more, our God, to the work of our hands. In you, the orphan finds mercy. I will heal their disloyalty. I will love them freely, for my anger has turned from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. His shoot shall spread out. His beauty shall be like the olive tree. And his fragrance like that of Lebanon. They shall again live beneath my shadow. They shall again flourish as a garden. 
they shall blossom like a vine. Their fragrance shall be like the wine of Lebanon. O Ephraim, what have I to do with idols? Is it I who answer and look after you? I am like an evergreen cypress. Your faithfulness comes from me. Those who are wise understand these things. Those who are discerning know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the upright walk in them. But transgressors stumble in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you allow me a few seconds to get back to the beginning of our reading from Hosea chapter 14. And there we have it. Aha. Now, we have been looking at the book of Hosea. And the last time we were together, we were in Hosea chapter 10. Yes. And um, <laughs> it's quite a jump. We, of course, do not have morning prayer on the weekend. So we would have missed out a couple of things. And without running, well, without running the risk of taking too long in what we are looking at, just a quick overview. So remember in Hosea 10, we spoke about Israel's sinful state them not having a physical king to lead them and the Lord telling them that they will become like an empty vine, right? That because their throne was empty and they had no good leadership, then he was trying to give sinful Israel counsel. And he tells Israel to see what their sins are, to examine themselves and to submit themselves to his chastening. And he tells them, you know what? Break the hard ground of your heart that you could turn to repentance and then come back to me but of course he also tells them that there is a terrible result for resisting him yes you have plowed wickedness you have reaped iniquity and you have eaten the fruit of lies yes and it was because they trusted in their own way that they were far away from god and the truth is this is the essence of all sin when we trust in our own way instead of god's way we more than likely will come to ruin and let me tell you, that ruin was what came upon Israel. And in chapter 11, the, the whole idea of God trying to convince them of his tender love. You know what? He, he, ah, boy, let me tell you, he was trying his best. When Israel was a child, I love him out of Egypt. I call him my son, you know, but as they left from Egypt, they sacrificed to the Baal and they burned incense to the carved image and so they called you know what the Baals their God instead of calling God their God and God's tender love for Israel although he loved them very much he had to put them in check yes and he was strict towards them he showed a strict hand towards them and of course their profession of oh you are our God was an empty one simply because they were being punished yes and so the empty profession brings of course further judgment from God and yet in the midst of, of of his chastening God's sympathy is there you know and in in, in chapter 11 you know verse 8 and 9 how can I give up on you Ephraim how can I hand you over Israel how can I make you like Adma how can I set you like Zebulon and these are places that would have all experienced destruction because they had turned away from the Lord and the whole idea was you know what please come back to me come back to me and god made promises to them knowing their present state knowing where their heart was and he made promises to them that he would take them back in chapter 11 and in chapter 12 we find of course um <laughs> the deeply rooted deceit of israel is pointed out you know israel trusts in deals and alliances with the surrounding nation is what caused them to be drawn away from God. You see, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. You remember we discussed that statement last week, yes? And the idea was because they wanted to maintain peace with the people around them, because they wanted to maintain peace, 
what happened was they started to engage in the practices and the things of the people they were trying to make peace with. You know, when I come to your house to visit you, if when I get to your door, I see a pile of shoes by the door and I see you walking in barefoot or socks, then when I get to your door as a sign of making sure I do not offend you, what I going to do? I going to take off my shoes at the front door like I see everybody else do. So I will engage in practices that I might not do in my own house, you know, in order to maintain the peace if I am trying to be, build a bond with somebody else. And that's what Israel ended up doing. And Israel in the North, Judah in the South, Judah was still more closely linked to God. Yes. And Israel was the one who, according to the book of Hosea, was playing the whore with false gods. Israel was the one who every new fad that came up in Assyria, every new fad that came up in Samaria, because they wanted to maintain trade relations, because they wanted to maintain the peace, every new thing, including religious practices and wicked temple worship and prostitution, they engaged in it for the sake of being liked by their neighbors. And let me tell you, if you have to compromise your integrity or your relationship with God to maintain a friendship with anybody or a relationship with somebody, know that that relationship is not worth it. Know that that relationship is not worth it. Nothing is worth you turning your back upon God in order to keep a regular human being pleased. You need me to say it again? Do not compromise your relationship with God, your integrity, and your Christ-like character. Do not compromise these things in order to gain popularity with man. Yeah? Don't do that. Because at the end of the day, when judgment comes, it is not the people, the humans around you, that have control over what your eternal future will look like. And so... Even if those around you are, are treating you poorly, blessed are you when they, um, they, they revile you and persecute you for my name's sake, for so have they done to the prophets who have gone before you. That's the truth. When you stick up for the things of God, you're probably going to stick out like a sore thumb when it comes to the things of the world. And guess what? That's okay. That's okay. Not because a thousand people is, are doing it means that it is right. You stick to your integrity. And that's what Israel didn't do. They didn't stick to their integrity. They didn't value their relationship with God enough to say to the nations around them, listen to me. I don't want to hear anything from you. I am going to stick with my God. And that's how that chapter 12 ended. And then chapter 13 Yes, they were clamoring because they didn't have an earthly king. And then there was two pictures of judgment that came up. Sinful Israel would be scattered like the morning clouds. Yes. And the Lord was saying to them, I will be your king. You're not going to have any leader other than me. You'll be torn apart because of your sinfulness like a lion. Yes. And you have rejected me as your king. And so you have. No earthly king right now that you are going to get. And it was a sorrowful judgment for Ephraim and her children. Yes? And, and man, they couldn't see the errors of their ways. And so we come to Hosea chapter 14. And the idea of real wisdom being turning away from their sin and turning back to God. And chapter 14 is a wonderful chapter to be at the end of, of this book. Yes? Because all of the ideas of their sinfulness, abounding grace, still exists. Uh, and, and, and no chapter, I find, in the whole book of Hosea is more rich in, 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 in an exhibition of God's mercy. Yes? And I mean, Israel repentance and God's response. Because, of course, cause, consequence, cure. Yes? Remember we spoke about this? I don't know if it was earlier this year or last year. I've been doing this for two and a half years now. Cause, consequence, cure. Yeah? And 
the Lord was telling them, return Israel to your God. You have stumbled because of your sin. And when you come to me, bring your words with you. Yes? And this is Hosea telling the people what to do. Tell the Lord, take away all guilt, accept that which is good, and we will offer the fruit of our lips. You know? And, and, and in returning to the Lord, Israel had to come to him on his terms, not their own. And God was saying, when you return to me, I want you to return to me, not with a silent feeling in your heart, but I want you to come to me with proper words of repentance, trusting in me. And the same thing goes for us. When we do something that is contrary to the laws of God, when we come before God, it is essential for us to take our words with us. There is a place that sharing um, and articulating the feelings that we are experiencing, yes, becomes necessary. I mean, worship of God is intelligent and, and God communicates with us through ideas and feelings. But it isn't enough, I believe, to sit before God and just feel love towards him. We have to tell God that we love him. It isn't enough to feel repentance for what I did wrong. Instead, I have to tell God that I am sorry and I'm in need of his mercy and his guidance to not commit that sin again. I mean, think about it. If you are walking past me and you accidentally step on my feet, if you look at me and in your mind and in your heart you are sorry, but you just look at me and continue walk without saying sorry, how you expect I would feel? I can't judge through your eyes that you are sorry. Yes? Until you say something like, oh my gosh, I didn't see you. I am sorry. I didn't mean to step on you. Something, something to, to, to explain and to show, all right. There is some remorse there. And the Lord was telling Israel, I hear that you say that, you know what, you feel bad. But you're showing with your actions, like you kind of feel bad, but I need you to confess your sins before me. That I could know and hear the sincerity that is within you. And guess what? They lacked that sincerity. They lacked that sincerity. They were coming before God because they were feeling the brunt of their punishment. But when we come before God for his mercy, we have to come with humility. We have to come recognizing our sin and recognizing that there is need for total dependence upon the grace of God if we're going to make it. We can't just offer sacrifices with our lips. We have to come with sincerity of heart and when we come, our words have to show the sincerity that we claim, that we feel. And it's interesting because they were supposed to come, the Lord says, saying our God is not the work of our own hands. Which makes sense. Because if you could make the God, then the God has no authority over you. They were supposed to come saying, we know the Assyrians can't save us. We know that you are the only one. For you are the fatherless, for you are in whom the fatherless finds mercy. And when we return to the Lord, taking words with us, we must come declaring his greatness. We must tell of what a great and merciful God he is and how, how he has saved us time before and how we are depending on him to save us again. And the Lord is telling them, if you come that way, I promise to restore you because you will be repentant. Yeah? Because you will be repentant. And, and he lets them know. I will heed your backsliding. I will love you freely. For my anger will turn away from you. And you will be growing like lilies. Yes. Like the evergreen cypress. Is how my love is for you. You will be as beautiful. Like an olive tree. And you will be as fragrant as Lebanon. God saw Israel was going to go back to black siding after they gave him empty words. But he promised to heal them from it if they were repentant. And he did it not because Israel would deserve it, but because it was in his nature, it is in his nature, to love them freely. 
He's a compassionate, merciful God. He will pardon our wrongs if we go back to him. That's it. And if you are in a place where you feel you are far from God because of whatever it is you have done or whatever it is you are going through, know that he is patiently waiting for you. Know that he simply wants to hear from you, to know that your heart and your mind and your words are all in alignment, ready and willing to come back to him. And when you come back to him with sincerity, your growth will be restored. Your beauty will be restored. Your strength will be restored. Your value will be restored. Your delight will be restored. Your abundance will be restored. When you come back to him and he releases the blessings he has been keeping specifically for you that you couldn't enjoy because of walking away from him. When you come back and all of those blessings are poured out upon you and your restoration come, let me tell you, let me tell you, brand new second hand, we call it. A full restoration. And goodness, if that is not what we all should look forward to. A restoration. Listen, I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you have allowed the enemy to convince you to try to tell you that you are not worthy of the blessings of God. You are beyond worthy because he created you in his image and likeness and you belong to him. And yes, we falter and yes, we backslide and yes, we make false steps along the way. But the thing to do is not to dwell in the moments of weakness where we went wrong. It is to trust in the strength of the Lord to lift us up, to move us forward, to walk back towards him. And when we confess our wrongs and humbly come before him, he is ready, willing and able, full of compassion and mercy, wanting to restore and bless us. The question is, what are we waiting for? Verse 9, and we will end here for this morning. Verse 9 tells us in the reading. Yes? Those who are wise understand that they need to come for repentance. Those who are discerning knows that they need to come for repentance with humility and truth. And they upright. Yes? Walk in the ways of the Lord. For the ways of the Lord are right. But transgressors will stumble over them. Walk in the way of the Lord. No one said the road would be easy in trying to walk in his ways. But walk in the way of the Lord. Pray that he directs your path. Experience the joy of having a covenant relationship with him. Wait and work towards your restoration. Amen. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage B on page 44. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your ways be known upon earth, and your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our first collect for this morning is the collect for proper 22. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, for giving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and given us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a prayer for the poor and neglected. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit, and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Mr. Bradley Broom, Ms. Kelly Ogdenbaugh, Mr. Oscar Rosado, Ms. Geraldine Young, Ms. Deborah Catus, Ms. Mar Bretman, and Ms. Margaret Vernon. Celebrating a birthday today is Mr. Oscar Choheke and Reverend Devere Morrill. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you would have had or will have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that God's blessings continue to be upon you for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. In our prayers, we remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, and Miss Mary. We remember and pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Zoila, Miss Beryl, and Miss Janet. We remember and pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Florence, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Kimberly, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, and Miss Venancia. We pray for Miss Betty, Miss Marta, Miss Marva, 
Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Althea, Miss Marlene, and Miss Teresa. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Helen, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlette, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, and Miss Glenda. We pray for Miss Laverne, Miss Mona, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delverine, Miss Doreen, Miss Geraldine, and Miss Myrtle. We remember and pray for Miss Joyce, Miss Kim, Miss Derla, Miss Molly, Miss Amy, Miss Jean, Miss Gladys, Miss Ismay, and Miss Elva. We continue to pray for Miss Verolyn, Miss Abelina, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Marilyn, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, and Miss Nina. We pray for Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kelia, Miss Velina, and Reverend Ilona. We pray for Reverend Linda, Miss Carolyn, Michelle Madine, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Laverne, Miss Sheila, Miss Gretel, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Olechi, Miss Dominic, Miss Pat, and Miss Robin. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, and Bishop Lawrence Nicasio. We remember and pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, and Mr. Dudley. We remember and pray for Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Father Jerry's, Mr. Basil, and Father Constancio. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Clinton, and Father Leroy. We pray for Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Brindell, and Mr. Lewis. For those who have requested the prayer of the church, and those who feel that there are none to pray for them, we lift up their concerns to Almighty God. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, for those who have lost a loved one over the weekend, those who laid a loved one to rest over the weekend, those who are preparing to lay a loved one to rest. We pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon you. We remember and pray for the Parks family on the passing of Mr. Alfred. We continue to remember and pray for the family of Miss Tansy Pascasio. We remember and pray for the family of Mr. Harrison Vargas Jr. For the family of Mr. Owen Morrison for the family of Mr. Wilmot Simmons. We pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon you during this time of bereavement, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember in our prayers our students, praying for Tammy, Anwar, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Ashley, Ria, Kai, Elton, Arian, Angel, Garrett, Rihanna, and Marissa. And we want to say congratulations to Marissa who um, had her graduation from, I believe it was the Norman Manley um, School of Law over the weekend. So congratulations to you, Marissa. We remember and continue to pray for our loved ones who are in the military. We remember and pray especially for Emil, Jason, Prince, Jade, Gavin, Charles, Barry, Sam, Kishen, and Alvin. 
We continue to pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Show Green, Arana, Joseph Eck, Lawrence, Sosa, and Cuellar. We remember and pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKean, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Orell, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, and Nurse Ashley. For all those who work in our medical system, the cooks, the adlies, the cleaner, the those in the administrative department, those at the vital statistics and the um, records office, the um, persons in the uh, mental health section, the nutritionists, the um, pharmacists, the radiologists, um, the lab technicians, all who offer of themselves to the service of God, to the service of others in our medical system, both in our public and private institutions. We pray for God's continued blessings and provision upon you at this time. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those persons who have contracted COVID-19. COVID-19 is still in existence even though our numbers are small. We continue to pray for those who are in the various forms of isolation and we continue to pray for those who care for those persons. We give God thanks for the availability of a vaccine and we continue to pray for a cure, the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for persons who would have lost employment, persons whose salaries would have been reduced, all who are struggling financially to make ends meet. We continue to remember and pray for the most vulnerable in our society. We remember and pray for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions. We remember those with mental health issues. We remember those with substance abuse issues, those living in uh, circumstances that are prone to violence and abuse. We pray for all persons who are most in need of God's protection and mercy. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for our security forces, for the various branches of the military, for the various branches and offices of our government. We pray for our Prime Minister, our um, Governor General, all our Ministers of Parliament. We pray for all persons in positions of public trust and authority, that they may see the authority bestowed upon them as a gift from God and live out door, those positions responsibly. We remember and pray for our churches and our church leadership. We pray for the private sector, for all non-governmental organizations who are involved in the fight against COVID-19. We remember and pray for the members of the international community, those most severely affected by the pandemic, those affected by the ravages of war, those affected by the by, um, gun violence. We remember and pray for all those who were in the path of Hurricane Ian, those lives that were lost, the damage and destruction to property. We pray for the rebuilding process at this time. We pray for all those who are grieving or are displaced because of this storm. We continue to pray for God's protection and provision over them, even as we pray for protection for ourselves against the ravages of natural disaster and hurricanes during this hurricane season. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercession by praying together Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me 
for morning prayer this morning. And you know what? I want to ask you to say a special prayer this morning for persons who commute to work. I have to include it in the written portion of our prayers. But there are many, many of our Belizean brothers and sisters who commute to work on a daily basis. People who, through their commute, getting to their work, keeps the wheels greased and the work going in terms of development in our country. And we are thankful for their service. We pray a protection or we pray for protection over them and over the drivers who are on the roads this morning. We heard of that accident last week and man, that was serious. We just continue to pray for traveling mercies for all those who journey this morning to and from work and from their workplaces. I want to thank you all for joining us yesterday morning for our youth service. We want to thank Ms. Keisha Lang, our youth director, Mr. Rudolph Dawson, our um, youth chaplain, as well as the online ministry and music team for being a part of getting that service up and running yesterday. We are most thankful for your service. And of course, we are thankful for you, the viewers, who participated in that surgery. Mm -hmm. We see you. I want you to know we see you. And so we want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Following this, we have noonday prayers at midday, then evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. We invite you to join us for any or all of these services as you are able. And we want to thank the ministry the online ministry team for making sure these services continue mm -hmm. on a daily basis people have to put them together you know people have to put them together people have to upload them people have to make sure that they're running on time and as scheduled and we are thankful for the persons who work in the online ministry team um also we are thankful for you the viewers because if you don't come to view all of our labor would be in vain we are thankful for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons. In the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close with this one, this one entitled, This is My Father's Word. I went to bed with this one on my mind. I woke up with this one on my mind this morning. I do pray you enjoy it as much as I do. Please, today, do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, same place, same time. Until then, God bless and bye for now.
Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you. Wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. 